Welcome back to our series on important Galicianers of the past two centuries. Emanuel Ringelblum, a brilliant Polish Jewish historian, relief worker, political activist, and community organizer, head of the Oynik Shabbos Archive, the secret history of the Warsaw Ghetto that he and his aides collected from 1940 until the destruction of the ghetto in 1943, one of the greatest of the great generation of Polish Jewish historians of the early 20th century. Before discussing his biography, what was it about Galicia that produced a man like Ringelblum? He was no aberration. Galicians dominated the field of interwar Polish Jewish historiography. Moshe Shore from Przemysl, Balaban from Lemberg, Schipper from Tarnow, Mahler and Eisenbach, who was Ringelblum's brother-in-law and close friend from Nova Sands, Friedman and Gelber from Lemberg, Lvov, Schatzky from Warsaw, but then educated in Krakow. And we can add to this list the great historian Salo Boron, perhaps the greatest uh, Jewish historian of a 20th century America, who comes from Tarnow, and Ringelblum, of course, from Buchach. Galicia had the perfect combinations, the perfect conditions for such a cadre. Legal emancipation and relatively liberal political freedoms, assembly, press, eventually suffrage, and so on. Equal access to higher education in Polish in Lvov or in German in Vienna. A tradition of political involvement in a particularly strong Jewish national movement trying to forge a new, a new Jewish identity. And we know that modern historiography was closely connected to modern nationalist movements. And in fact, most historians of Polish Jewry supported one variety of Jewish nationalism or another. But also, there was a particular push among Polonized intellectuals in Galicia, which was already the most Polonized community in modern Poland, to defend the place of Jews in Poland, historically and at that time, and to counter the specific anti-Galician stereotypes connected with the Galicianer that we've spoken about before. The later historians may have been Jewish nationalists, but as Rachel Manneken has written, the first call for scholarship on Polish Jewish history comes from the Hebrew language assimilationist organ Hamaskir. They were trying to create a Polish Jewish identity, fully Polish and fully Jewish, and history played a key role in this process. In other words, the Polonization of Galicia, facilitated by Austria in 1867, combined with Jewish emancipation and politicization, led to the spark of Jewish historiography, first by Polonized Jews, seeking to strengthen Galician Jewish pride as part of the Polish nation, in other words, to foster Polish Jewish identity, and eventually comes to full fruition among Jewish nationalists a generation later. Many of the topics, that even Jewish nationalists would develop, history of the communities, legal status of Jews in Poland, Jewish institutions of self-rule, participation of Jews in Polish struggles for freedom, first appeared on the pages of that assimilationist journal. Now, regarding Ringelblum, sources of our knowledge are minimal, ironically, since he rarely wrote about himself or his own family, even in the ghetto, and most of those who knew him are long since dead. We know he was born in Buchach in East Galicia, not a wealthy city like Drahobich was, heavily Jewish, 57.3% in 1900, but not especially Hasidic, actually more of a stronghold of Haskalah and later Zionism and even a nascent Jewish labor movement. His father was a grain merchant, well-respected and middle class, gave his children a solid Jewish and secular education. He himself, Ringelblum, went to a modern cheder, what's called a cheder mitukan, uh, that would have a more masculine approach to Jewish education, but also had a year of Polish gymnasium before fleeing the war west to the city of Sanz. He was young enough that the trend towards Polonization was largely gone by the time he was growing up, as a result of rising anti-Semitism in the Polish national movement. Intellectuals like Ringelblum were by then mostly drawn to one variety of Zionism or another. Sanz, in contrast to Buchach, was a heavily Hasidic, uh, heavily Hasidic town. Although, ironically, when he got there, he was surprised by how little his Jewish classmates uh, were interested in speaking or learning Yiddish. His own love for Yiddish led him to the most important discovery of his life, Poaletzion, the socialist Zionist party founded by the Marxist Zionist and Yiddish scholar Ber Borachov. Ringelblum embraced its combination of socialism, Zionism, and Yiddish, 
joining the left-wing Polizion when the party split. Here he met his lifelong friends, including Mahler and Eisenbach. And left Paul Lezion, Linke Paul Lezion, would continue to guide his politics, his social circles, and his communal activities for the rest of his life. It instilled in him a commitment to Jewish history, love of Yiddish, devotion to the Jewish masses, and deep moral sensibility that shaped his development as an historian and as a communal leader, particularly under the unfathomable trials of the Holocaust period. Rejected by medical school in Warsaw because they had reached the limit of Jews, he instead turned to history, arriving in the capital in 1919 at a very critical period. Warsaw was the cultural and political center of the young Polish nation and was serving the same purpose for Polish Jews. Many of the leading Galician Jewish intellectuals came to Warsaw where their advantages of education and background came to flourish. In 1927, he completed his doctoral dissertation on the Jews of Warsaw until 1527, which he published in 1932. And over the 1930s, he published widely in Polish and Yiddish on topics related to Polish Jewish history. For example, Polish perceptions of Jews in the 18th century, the histories of the Jewish book trade, role of the Jews in the uprising of 1794, a history of Jewish physicians, a second volume of the history of Warsaw Jewry, and more. He lived as a history teacher at the Yehudia, a private secondary school for girls during those years. But history is the center of his vision for the future. The key influences were two of the men of the older generation of Jewish historians, Meir Balaban and Isaac Schipper. These are key influences who are emphasizing, rather than downplaying, Jewish distinctiveness. Balaban founded the school of Polish Jewish historiography, the first man to synthesize Polish archival sources uh, together with Jewish communal records and rabbinic responsa. He raises a generation of students in these arts, over 100 master's essays alone written under his tutelage. He was an associate professor at the University of, Ro of Warsaw in 1935, the only person to hold a university post in Jewish history in interwar Poland, publishing hundreds of works in Polish, German, Russian, Hebrew, and Yiddish. Schipper pioneered Jewish economic history and also served as deputy of the Polish parliament in the, in the Polish parliament from 1919 to 1927, a key intellectual mentor whom Ringelblum revered. And he would also later work with Ringelblum in the Oynik Shabbos archive in the Warsaw Ghetto. He would be murdered after his capture during the uprising. Ringelblum was a talented scholar, but his real brilliance shined in organization. A couple examples. In 1923, he helped found the young historians, the Younger Historica Circle, eventually including some 40 Jewish history students. They published two journals in 26 and 29. And with Mahler, they gather and publish the work of a generation of Jewish historians with no hope of academic career. He also celebrates the establishment of YIVO, the Jewish Scientific Institute in Lithuania, in, 19, in Vilna, excuse me, in 1925, and worked closely with their historical section. And he was active in the Land Kentnish movement, Know Your Land movement, encouraging engaged tourism to stress Jews' age-old links to Eastern Europe. In 1932, he began to work for the American Joint Distribution Committee, the, the, the joint, learning how self-help could provide economic assistance and moral support to Polish Jews fighting discrimination and violence. When World War II broke out, Ringelblum organized relief for Warsaw's Jews. He was the leader of Alleinhilf, a key relief organization in the ghetto, and also the Yiddish Kulturorganizatia, the Yiddish cultural, organiza cultural organization. Alleinhilf served as the basis of Onig Shabbos, the secret ghetto archive that he founded in November of 1940 until the ghetto's uh, uh, liquidation in 1943. He collected all variety of artifacts from refugee accounts and literary essays to tram tickets and candy wrappers. This archive is so significant, significant as to warrant its own presentation and indeed is the basis uh, of an important uh, book by an historian, Sam Cassow, and since then a documentary based on that work, and I encourage you to explore it. Until 1942, he had hoped it would form the basis, the archive would form the basis of a post-war Polish-Jewish reconciliation. After mass extermination begins, he hoped it would document the destruction of Polish Jewry. He escapes 
uh, from the Travniki labor camp in August of 1943, but was caught in a bunker with his wife and son and 34 others in March of 1944, all of them murdered a few days later. He had been writing the entire time, working on a history of Polish-Jewish relations during the war, as well as other essays. Two of the three caches of material uh, that the Oynik Shabbos archive buried were later discovered in the rubble of the ghetto. One was never recovered. In many ways, Ringelblum is Galicia. He's the culmination of Galician history, a product of fin de siècle, turn of the century, political and cultural transformation and modernization unique to that province. A sizable intelligentsia, fluent in Polish and German, but inclined towards Zionism, not assimilationism. There's no revolutionary traditions in Galicia as the, the extent that they were existing in Russia, but the Jewish labor movement combined with Jewish nationalism was there, which was his particular angle. He flees the Russians during World War II along with hundreds of thousands of other Galicians, migrates to Warsaw, an independent Poland, as many other Galician intellectuals do, and dominating certain fields like history. And his destruction in the Holocaust, working to the last moment to preserve their history and culture for the future. Galician does not survive the Holocaust, except in the work of men like Emanuel Ringelblum and some of the artists that escaped from that destruction. We'll look at one more in just a moment. Thank you. <laughs>